Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number. Today is our lesson number 17. This, this is day 3017. 3 stands for the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 17. The problems that we are about to solve on day 17 of third edition are the exact same problem that appeared already in the first and the second edition. If you are interested in watching the original solutions where I solved the problem at a much slower pace, you will find that the original solutions to the, all the problems that we are going to do today in this video are from day number 57 through 60. 57, 58, 59 and 60 even though there are only three problems in this page. Listen very carefully. There are only three problems but problem number seven, problem number seven that deals with the notion of permutation or, and combinations there were two, two lectures, 57 and 58, there are two lectures on the concept of permutation and combination. And if that is something that is, that is your weak area, make sure you watch both of those videos. You spend a great deal of time on that topic. I'm not going to do that again. As I said, this, is this, 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 this series assumes that you understand the basic concept. We're just going to solve the problem. So let's get going. We are on, we are on page number 167. There are three problems that you see there, 7, 8, and 9. For the time being, for the time being, we're going to skip question number seven. We're going to start with eight. We're going to start with eight because eight and nine are simple problems. We are, I want to get them out of the way before we get into number seven because I want to spend some time with you on question number seven. It's a very important topic for the exam, understanding what is the combination and what is a permutation, how does it differ, and how do we calculate them. We're going to spend a little bit of time on it, uh, but first I want to knock out the, the two easy problems. Question number eight looks something like this. Question number eight, we are told 2 minus 5x is less than or equal to negative of 6x minus 5 over 3. Make sure you understand, make sure you understand that this negative does not appear in front of 6x, this negative appears in, uh, in, in front of the entire thing. And if it makes it easier for you to keep track of it, put a parenthesis around it. This is what we have. Let's get going. And this is also, this is also a topic that appears regularly on the GRE, solving inequalities. And again, it is something that you need help with, if something that you need practice on, on my channel. On my channel, you will find a series of videos under the topic of basic math. Simply, simply titled basic math. There are 15 videos on the topic of inequalities, on the topic of inequalities under the series of basic math. Day 106 through 110, those are easy problems. Day 121 through 125 where we did problems that are medium. Uh, and then finally, from day 161 to 165, you will find five more problems which are quite challenging. And if you're interested, you can, look, you can, you can work through those problems or at least work through at least the first five or 10. This is, in this, in this category, this will qualify as an easy problem. It's a very straightforward, simple problem. The first thing you have to do is get rid of 3 from the bottom. But we're going to get rid of 3 by multiplying both sides of the inequality by 3. So again, put a parenthesis around it and put a 3 there. We're done. Now we have a 3 at the bottom here, we have a 3 over there, 3 cancels out. Cancels. That was the whole point. Let's distribute the 3 here. 3 times 2 is 6. And 3 times 5 is 15, but we have a minus sign there, so minus 15x. We are told it's less than or equal to negative of 6x minus 5. I could have done it there, but I want to make sure that you understand. So now we're going to distribute the negative sign. We're going to get negative 6x, and negative times the negative is going to become positive, which we are told is greater than or equal to 6 minus 15x. We want to bring all of our x's to one side and all the known quantities to the other side. So let's bring the 6x here by adding 6x to both sides. And we want to bring the 6 to the other side. Let's subtract 6 from both sides. That's it. We are almost done. 
we are almost done. What we find is, what we find is that this six has a plus sign in front of it. This one has a minus sign. That was the whole point, which is why we subtract a six. So they cancel out. Similarly here, this is negative six x and a positive six x. They can cancel out. Negative fifteen x and a positive six x is going to give you negative nine x, and positive five and a negative six is going to give us negative one. And don't forget, it is less than or equal to sign. Okay, this is where, this is where things are going to get a little bit tricky. A little bit tricky. This is where you have to pay attention. I'm not going to explain everything. If you need that much explanation, you need to watch the series. When we multiply, when we multiply two sides of the inequality by a negative number, by a negative number, that's what we have to do because we're not interested in negative nine x. We want positive nine x. We multiply it by a negative number. We're going to multiply both sides of the inequality by the negative number. The direction of the inequality has to switch. Direction of the inequality has to switch. Why? Well, very simple. Very simple reasons. Where can I show you very quickly? I don't want to raise any of this thing. Well, we have no choice but to raise it. Let's raise the top. Why did the direction have to change? Well, it's a very simple reason. We all know. The three is less than four, but if you multiply three by negative one and you multiply that side of the inequality by negative one, now this is negative three, and negative three is no longer is no longer smaller than negative four. Negative three is in fact greater than negative four. So as soon as as soon as we multiply as we, as soon as we multiply inequality by a negative quantity on both sides, the direction of the inequality has to switch, which is why we switched it here. So negative one times negative nine is Positive nine x is greater than or equal to negative one times negative one is one. We divide both sides by nine and we are done. We divide both sides by nine, and the solution to this problem is x is greater than or equal to one nine. X is greater than or equal to one nine. But that's not that's not all. Now we have to locate this thing on the graph. Now we have to locate this thing on the graph. And it's very simple because. Because the answer choices that they give you, they have no numerical value. It's just a number line with a zero in the middle, but no numerical value. So what this tells us is that what this tells us is that how do we artic how do we articulate this thing in the context of the answer choices that are given to given to us? The way the answer choices are presented to us, the way we will articulate this answer choice is that x is some positive quantity. X is some positive quantity. So there we go. Here is our zero. Here is our x, some positive quantity. That is one ninth happens to be, and anything that is equal to, because it's equal to sign as well, anything that is equal to, or more than that. So we're going to circle this dark, make it darker, and this is our anything that's more than. But of course, we don't have any numerical value. It is some positive quantity, and that's the answer choice. If you look at all the answer choices, what does answer choice A say? Answer choice A says that it is. Something less than some positive quantity. That's not what we're looking for. Answer choice B says x is something greater than some negative quantity. That's not what we're looking for. It is the answer choice C. Answer choice C says that x is some positive quantity. That's answer choice C. I think I already explained too much. I didn't mean to explain this much. That wasn't the intention. Let's go to the next one, shall we? That's the answer choice. X is greater than or equal to one nine, and that's what we're looking for. That's answer choice C. As I said, work on those. Number nine. In number nine, it says, we are told that one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. We are told is sixty. This is given. This is given to us. And the question that they're asking is, what's the average? What is what's the average? What is the average of x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth? That's the question. Well, how do we find the average? Well, it's very simple. If we want to find the average, we just add them all up. We we, we take their sum. We take their sum, and of course, the way the question is written, it should not it will not have a plus sign in between. Because the question is. What's the average of x, x squared, x cubed, and x to the fourth? That's what I meant to write. How do we find the average of these four quantities? 
Well, it's very simple. We first add them up. And divide by 4. But before we divide by 4, let's see what the, what, what the sum happens to be. This is the sum. What's the first thing we notice? First thing we notice is that they all have a common factor of x. x, x squared, x cubed, x to the 4. Let's take out x as a common factor. If we take out x as a common factor, we are left with 1 here. x squared divided by x is going to give us x. x cubed divided by x is going to give us x squared. And here we are going to end up with x to the third. That's the sum. But we know what this is equal to. We know what this is equal to. How do we know it? Because it says so right there. It is given to us. We are told that 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed is 60. So the sum of these four numbers is simply, this is 60 times x. The sum is 60x. And since sum is 68, how do we find the average? Average is just this sum divided by 4. The average is simply the sum divided by 4 because there are 4 of them. And we found that sum is 60x divided by 4, which is going to give us 15x. The average of these four quantities turns out to be 15x. And that's how such was B. Now let's do problem number 7. Let's do problem number 7. I don't know how long it's going to take us, but we'll see what we can do. I don't want to turn this into a long lecture about the permutation and combination, but at the same time, I don't like the idea of just standing here and just giving you the answer, because that's not what we are here for. So it will require some explanation. Three team members, how many are there? Okay, before we worry about that, let's start with something simple. Okay, and the topic here is permutation versus combination. And as I said, there are two, two lectures there, day 57 and 58, where we covered this in much more detail. Let's start with something very simple. We have three people, A, B, and C. Stay with me in the story, okay? And we want to pick two. We want to pick, pick, pick two for president and vice president. We have to pick two people. We have two positions open and we want uh, three candidates and they are they both they all want to be either president or vice president. It is your job to make a decision as to one which one of the, uh, these three people is going to be a president and who is going to be vice president. And since there are only two reopening, we're not going to pick a third person. How many different ways can we pick president? Well there are three people, A, B and C. So there are three different ways. I have three choices. Uh, to have my president. I can have A as a president, I, have, I can have A as a president, I can have B as a president, I can have C as a president. Once we have chosen the one person out of three for president, there are three different ways of choosing him. Once we've chosen one person for a president, how many different ways can I pick my vice president? And the answer is, there are three, two different ways because we already picked one person out of three, we already picked one, so we have two choices. If you pick A, if you pick A for the president, then you can choose either B or a C for vice president. If you pick B as a president, if you pick B as your president, you can either choose A or B as your, a, a or C as your vice president. And if you pick C, if you pick C as your president, you can either pick A or B as your vice president. There are six choices. As you can see, there are six choices. 3 times 2. This is a quick way. 3 times 2. Another way to look at this thing very quickly, instead of, instead of making all of this first, another way to look at the, this very quickly would have been something like this. We have three people, A, B, C. We can have either A, B, we can have A, C, we can have B, A, Either A is the president and B is the vice president, or B is the president and A is the vice president. Here we have A as the president, C is the vice president, or C is the president, A is the vice president, or we can have B as the president, C as the vice president, or C as the president and B as the vice president. There are six possibilities. This, what we're talking about, what we're dealing with here, this, this scenario that we're dealing with here, is called is called permutation. 
is called permutation. And in permutation, and in permutation, A B and B A, we can repeat this thing. This 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 thing is one scenario. A B is one scenario. B A is one scenario. Permutation. Remember, remember, permutation permits. Repetition. You count A B as one and B A as other because order matters. In permutation, order matters. Permutation permits repetition. Uh, repeat, uh, repetition rather. This is a mnemonic. Just use this as a mnemonic. Permit, permutation. In permutation, order matters. And because order matters, it allows repetition. A B is counted as one, B A is counted as another one. In combination, order does not matter. Let's talk about combination. So this is a permutation here. In permutation here, order matters. Of course matters. Of course it matters having chosen A as a president and B as a vice president. It's very different scenario than having chosen B as a president and A as a vice president. It's two different situations. Order matters. Now let's talk about combination. In combination, order does not matter. Order does not matter. We have three people, A, B, and C. And what you're telling me is that, what you're telling me is that there are three people in that room, there are three people in that room, go, go get two of them from there. There are three people sitting in the room, go get two of them. To help me work with the, on this project and my job is to just go in there and grab two people any two people out of the three so any two people how many how many people can how many how many ways can i pick a first person well there are three different ways i can choose a first person how many different ways can i put pick a second person well there are after i've chosen first person there are only two people left and i have two choices to pick a second person but i have to remember but we have to remember that as soon as you pick a second person, as soon as you pick a second person, you begin to repeat things. You begin to repeat things. Be counting everything twice. Take a look at it. So now we are dealing with combination. Do you understand? As soon as you, this is combination. So we have, there are three people. So there are three ways of choosing the first person. There are two people left in the room. I'm going to pick one more person. I can either choose a B or a C. If I if I choose B as the first person, I can either choose A or a C. If I choose C as the first person, I can either choose A or B. But what we know, what we notice is that as soon as we begin to pick a second person, as soon as we begin to pick second person, we begin to repeat. A and B is the exact same thing as B and A. Because I just want two people. There is no order here. We just want two people to work on the project. So I cannot count A, Mr. A and Mr. B as one scenario and Mr. B and Mr. A as second scenario. Order does not matter. They're just going to work on the project. It doesn't matter. Similarly, once we have chosen A and C, we cannot count C and A as another scenario. It's the same thing. They are same two people. They are the same two people. And finally, once we have chosen, once we have chosen B and C, what can we do? B and C, B and C, this is a C. We cannot count C and B as another one. They are the same thing. B, C is same as C, B. B, A is same as A, B. A, C is same as same people as C, A. So how do I adjust for it? How do I account for the fact that as soon as we pick a second person, we are repeating, we are counting everything twice. How do I account for the fact that I'm counting everything twice? Well, it's very simple. Just take the whole amount, divide by two. That's it. We adjusted it. And as soon as we do that, we realize there are only three different ways of picking two people out of three. Only three different ways. And what are the three different ways? All right here. A, B, C. There are only three ways of picking two people out of three when the order does not matter when we're dealing with combination in the combination order does not matter well, there are only three different ways of picking two people either AB or AC or BC there are only three different ways 
And here's another way to look at it. Here's, here's another way to look at it. See the two cancelled out and there are only three different ways of picking two people out of three. Here's another way to look at it. There are three people. A, B, C. A, B, C. A, B, C. There are three people in that room. Go get me. Go, go get two people to work on the project. So you go in that room and you say, I'm not going to pick C. Or you go in that room and say, I'm not going to pick B. I don't like B. Or you go in the room and say, ah, I don't want to deal with A. Well, there you go. There are only three different ways of picking two people out of three. A, B, A, C, or B, C. But if we do it this way, if we say there are three different ways of picking a first person, two different ways of picking a second person, we end up saying six. there are six ways. There aren't six ways. There are half as many ways. Because we're counting everything twice. Everything is being double counted. How do we account for it? For how are many people, how many, how are many different ways there are? Take half of it. Take half of it. If there were, if there were, if there were seven people, if there were seven people, and you had to choose two, well, there are seven ways of picking a first person because there are seven different ways after we have chosen the first person. There are six different ways of choosing a second person. It looks like there are 42 ways, but there aren't 42 ways because everything is double counted. If everything is double counted, you must divide that by two. Take half of it. And there are in fact only 21 ways of picking two people out of seven if the order does not matter. If it's the combination, you're simply picking two people, the positions have no significance, then there are only 21 ways. When you start picking a third person, when you start picking a third person, you start triple counting. And that's the part I'm not going to do it here, because this, as I, as I already told you twice, these two videos, 57, day 57 and day 58, they were very long videos, they were almost one hour long together. This is where we explain and this is where we learn visually on the chart, on the, on, on the blackboard rather, as to what happens when you pick a third person. When you pick a third person, you start triple counting everything. When you pick a third person, you start triple counting everything. I'm going to give you a quick example to make you understand. Just a quick example. There are three people. There are three people. Choose three. Well, how many different ways can I pick three people out of three? Pick all of them. That's it. There's only one way. There are only three people and you're asking me to choose three. But if you do the work mathematically, this is how it works out. This is how it works out. There are three different ways of picking a first person. There are two different ways of picking a second person. But as soon as you pick a second person, you begin to repeat things. You begin to double count. So you have to take half of that. As soon as you pick a third person, how many different ways there are of picking a third person? Well, you already picked... When you, there were three different ways of picking a first person. There were two different ways of picking a second person. Whoever is left over is the third person you're going to pick and there's only one person left over, there's only one way. But as soon as you, pick, you start picking a third person, you begin to triple count everything. You begin to triple count everything and you have to divide by three to account for that. To account for the fact that by the time you pick the third person, everything is triple counted. This is of course the boring example because it's three out of three. More interesting example will be on day number 57 and 58. What happens? Well, what happens is what we exactly what we what we know what's going to happen. There are only there is only one way of picking three people out of three. Just pick all of them. As the mathematics shows clearly here, three is going to drop out. Two are going to drop out. There is only one way to pick three people out of three. Because things get triple counted. And I'm going to show you very very quickly, very very quickly. I'm going to show you how things get triple counted. So there are three ways of picking a first person: A, B, C. After you have picked the first person, there are two ways of picking a second person. B, C, A, 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 C, and A, B. So, there are three ways of picking a first person, there are two ways of picking a second person, but as you can see, we begin to repeat. A, B is counted as one, and B, A is counted as one. So, to account for that, we have to take half of that quantity. Now, let's pick a third person. Let's pick a third person. If you have chosen A, first first person was A, second sec, second choice was B, the third choice is going to be C. A, C, B. B, A, B, A, C. C, B, A. C, A, 
B, B, C, A. And what happens? What happens is we start count, we start triple counting. Everything is counted three times. Watch, watch. Watch what happens. A, B, C, B, A, B, A, C, and C, A, B. They're the same three people. I'm counting them three times. So there is one way, there is only one way to pick a third person, but by that time you begin to triple count. You have to divide the whole quantity by three. And as we searched a little while ago, threes are going to cancel out, twos are going to cancel out. There is only one way to pick one, there is only one way to pick three people out of three. Now let's do the problem. And the problem it says, it says a manager is forming a team. You see it's just a team, it's just a committee if you like. If you like team, committee, same thing. Let me find this problem here. Okay, so one more time. You have the book in front of you, I hope, because I'm not going to put the black uh, question on the blackboard. I'm going to read to you. It says, a manager is forming a six-person committee, six-person team, to work on a project. There are 18 candidates. There are 18 people. 18 people all together. Sorry, 11 people. I don't know why. why. There are, there are 11 people all together. There are 11 people all together, we are told. It goes on to say that the manager has already chosen three. He has already chosen three. He has already decided which three people must be on the team. So there are eight more people left. Maybe the three kind of people were somebody who he, who he absolutely needed on the project. He must have it. He must, uh, he, there was no choice. So he chose already three person. Maybe one person was somebody guy dealing with marketing and there was one IT guy and maybe one guy dealing with finance. And he needed those three people on the project. Absolutely. So he already chose those three people. There are eight people left. He to choose three more because he wants a team. He wants a team of six people. He says a manager is forming a six person team. He has already chosen three. Already chosen three. There are eight people left and he has to choose three more. So let's choose three more. Let's choose three more. We have to choose three more people to work on the team, to work on the project. How many different ways can I choose first person? There are eight of them. Well, obviously there are eight of them. I have eight choices. How many different ways can I pick a second person? After I have chosen one person, there are only seven left. I have seven choices to pick a second person. But as soon as I pick a second person, I know I'm going to begin to repeat things. I'm going to start double counting. I have to account, we have to account for that by dividing everything by two because we are double counting everything. After we have chosen a second person, how many different ways can I pick a third person? Well, there are only six people left. There were eight people. I have chosen one here. I put chose a second person, there are only six people left, which means I have six choices to pick a third person. But as soon as you pick a third person, you're going to start triple counting. You have to account for that by dividing by three. That's it, we are done. That's your answer. That's it. Two times three is six, so they're going to go away. And the answer simply is eight times seven. Seven sevens are 49, 49 plus seven, 49 plus one is 50, so it's 56. There you go. There are 56 ways of choosing three people out of a total of eight. The earlier part that there were 11 people and he has chosen three, they're just being cute. They're just trying to be cute. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. What is material to us, what is, what, what is of relevant to, relevance to us is the fact that there were eight people left over and we had to choose three out of those eight people. And it turns out there are 56 ways of doing so. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now. Hopefully this video hasn't gotten too long. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.